114 of the income stream. Sorry for the technical issues starting here at the beginning, but if you're watching the replay, that doesn't matter. We're here. I think it's gotten, uh, I think it's working now. So uh, let's get started. We have a lot to cover today. We're going to be doing some website and YouTube channel reviews, which means you're going to understand what works and what doesn't online so that when you start building your stuff, you'll have that much more knowledge and be able to better and more highly impact those who come across you and your brand no matter where it is. So let's get started. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. You know, it's one of those situations that, you know, you do everything the same every single time, and then that one time it just doesn't work out the way you thought it was going to. And it's really important that we just need to, uh, we just need to keep going. We just need to keep going and, and, and figure it out. So hopefully this is working the way it should, and uh, we're ready to go. So I think it's working. Maybe something was a little bit choppy, but we're going to get started nonetheless. And uh, yeah, so what happened was I just, you know, I restarted the computer. That didn't work. I narrowed down the problem, which is what I love to do when I'm problem solving. Okay, where is the issue? And this is exactly what I do when I start my businesses too. I figure out, okay, well, where is the problem actually lie and try to narrow it down? Because if we just go, things don't work and then just give up, well then how is that actually making progress? Here I found that it was actually Ecamm Live that was providing the issue. And in particular, it was one little component of it. I switched it out, restarted it, and it seems to be working now, which is all good. So. Uh, hopefully now after the intro, uh, seems like it's buffering, but there's a little bit of a delay here, but I'm going to keep going anyway, you know? And so I already have some websites selected and picked out that we're going to review. And, uh, hopefully this, uh, works again, if, if this doesn't, or it seems to sort of crash again, uh, we're going to move over to Instagram and, uh, that's, that's where we're going to go from there. So first up, we're going to have Lindsay Hazel. Lindsay, if you're in the house, uh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm going to go over to your YouTube channel right now, and we're going to get started by reviewing your YouTube channel. And what I really loved about your YouTube channel when I checked it out earlier is that you have this really nice banner up top. You show up, your face shows up. It's very clear what you and your business actually is about and what your YouTube channel here is about. You're at 1.7 thousand subscribers, uh, 1,700 subs, which is really great. Keep going. You have some of your most popular videos up front here for people to see. You've uh, developed your channel and it's laid out in a way that's beautiful. The thumbnails look really great too. So I'm not actually gonna spend too much time on the thumbnails and the layout and the design of your channel. I definitely wanna go into a little bit more about the videos itself. And then I know, you, I, I believe you have a website as well that I wanna check out. And we haven't really talked about how to connect a YouTube channel to a website and a website to a YouTube channel. And I wanna dive into that a little bit more too and discover and see how you're helping me see that you have these other platforms available uh, as well, which is really cool. I do see, however, that you have this thing called free download. I wanna click on that just to kind of see what happens. That's very intriguing. I love that you have that in the uh, area up top there. And when you're setting up your YouTube channel, you can include things like this in the settings area of your channel. You also have, um, Patreon here as well, but I'm going to click free download and see what happens. And it looks like it goes to a lead magnet, which is really great. Free YouTube starter checklist, my gift for you. Discover how to start your YouTube channel with ease. Inside, you'll find step-by-step -step checklist to create your YouTube channel. Five easy things you should do before starting your channel so that you're uh, set up for success. Plus, it's printable. All right, I really love this. There's only one thing that I would recommend you do differently here. I like that you have download now. It's very clean. It's just very upfront. You sell this thing very well. I think the image could do more justice for what this is about. Perhaps uh, having it be a little bit more teaser-like versus just like a giant image sharing a YouTube starter checklist, which you've already shared on the other side of the page here. So that's the only thing. Perhaps there is something related to you know, the checklist or, you know, uh, the, the, the top five things or the easy things that you should do. Um, something that is attractive and perhaps that a person could imagine printing out, for example. But other than that, I think it's really great. So I'm going to click out of that. We're going to go back to some of your videos here. And uh, we're just going to click on a couple of your recent ones. So I'm going to go to videos. And I'm going to scroll to the so let's see, uh, let's looks like you're uploading, you know, two to three times a month, which is great. Uh, looks like you were a little bit more consistent before, but you know, your channel's doing really well. I think that I've, 
uh, I think that you uh, are doing a great job here. So let's see, upload IGTV. I, I will say that you'll notice here, watch this, uh, thumbnails with your face on it have way more views than thumbnails that do not have your face on it, interestingly enough, right? So let's see, uh, 1.4, 4.7 here, uh, let's see, 1,000, 3,000 versus the others. I do see that there's one in particular that probably got picked up on the search algorithm, how to schedule an invite on Zoom. But these are the kinds of patterns, and yo, hey, Archer, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, my friend. Bruh. These are the things that we need to notice. What is working for us so far? Let's do more of that, right? But again, I like the theme here. I like the, the way it's set up. But I'm going to click on your latest video here, how to upload a video to IGTV from computer. I've noticed that a lot of your videos are very search based and very tutorial. Uh, I also like that they are quick as well. I mean, seconds, upload a photo, photo zoom, and uh, you're good to go. Um, so these are just honing in on very tight components of a lot of these things. But let's let's see how we get into uh, uploading IGTV video from desktop. Hey there, it's Lindsay from lindsayhazel.com and I'm going to show you really quickly how you can upload a video from your desktop to IGTV. It took me forever to figure this out and then when I did, I thought, oh my goodness, I have to share this. <laughs> so what you do is you log into your Instagram account on your desktop. So I'm logged into my account and then right here I can see IGTV. You click that. And then you go to this blue button that says upload. And then right here is where you can put everything in there. So I'm going to just go in. Okay, so a couple quick comments here. Just while we're here, you'll see me on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, love how you just get right into it. People click the video because they want to learn about the thing. And you start out by being in the thing and you do your intro in there. There's many ways to structure an intro, but the hook is really good. And it, of course it comes from what people are searching for, the title and the thumbnail do justice for, okay, well, what are you gonna get out of this video? And you don't provide a ton of fluff. In fact, you tell a quick story about how you found this and that you needed to share it. I think that um, is great because you're sharing information that other people would be interested in and they would likely uh, want to subscribe. I'm definitely going to pay attention to the end of the video to see how you either connect me to other videos on your channel or get me to subscribe and entice me to do that. That's really key because especially for these short videos, here's, here's the thing y'all, YouTube wants people to stay on YouTube and the more that you can help YouTube do that, the more likely you're going to be found elsewhere and be recommended to other videos. So with these short videos, yes, short is okay and you get to the point, which is fantastic, but hopefully if you provide that value, very clearly at the end of these videos, we really need to really entice people to either watch other videos or click around or subscribe and come back for more because that's the downside of these shorter videos is that the watch time, even if they watch 100% of the videos, a, let's see, for this video, which is two, minute, uh, two minutes and 13 seconds, um, if somebody creates a five minute video that only gets seen 50% of the time, that's two minutes and 30 seconds, that's still going to outweigh your video. So what you can do to help yourself is to encourage more watch time, if that makes sense. Encourage more watch time, get people going further in your channel. So I'm gonna scroll through until the end here. And by the way, that this is making me wanna do this too, patflynn.com slash Instagram, whenever you're doing, or excuse me, Instagram.com slash Pat Flynn, whenever you're doing a tutorial like this, showing people legit by just doing it yourself is a great way to do this. So I'm gonna click on IGTV, and I'm gonna click on Upload, and this is exactly what I see, because it was exactly what you showed me, which is really great. Now it's making me go, hmm, how can I take my YouTube videos here and actually, uh, actually repurpose them, which is the thing that was missing from your intro. What would be the reason to do this? Um, when you, even though people are here to find this information, if you can even share a little bit more about what they can use this for and how this can help them further, why is the benefit, what's the benefit of doing this? It's gonna, it's gonna remind them to, st to, to, to follow through and stick around. And it's also going to position you as the authority as well. So including the benefits in these tutorials, hey, here's a tool to help you go live. It's called Ecamm Live. But here are the benefits of going live, which then further a person's reasons for staying there. Does that does that make sense? So also including the benefits, which you didn't include. Why would I want to put IGTV in here? Or what are the use cases in here? So I might start this by going, hey guys, I was struggling earlier about how to 
uh, take my videos and put them on IGTV. And it's actually really easy to do on the desktop. And I wanna show this to you because once you figure this out, you'll be able to repurpose your YouTube videos and put them on your IGTV. You'll be able to be found by more people because you'll have more uh, information on your channel that people can find. And I wanna show you how to really easily do this, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So let's click play on this video and let's actually scroll through to the end. And I'm going a little bit deeper into your stuff than I, I do with a lot of other people's stuff because you've already accomplished a lot of things like the design and the artwork of your YouTube channel, which is really great. So I'm gonna click to the end here. Let's see how you close this off for me. Your thing, it will come up. So see, now it's in my edgy TV thing. And then now you do have end screen here, an end screen here. An end screen on YouTube is within the last 20 seconds of your video, you're allowed to pop up these little thumbnails for other videos, right? And you're doing the exact thing that you should be doing, which is putting them there. However, number one, it's overlapping the rest of the tutorial, right? So you're showing certain pieces. You can move these things around. You can move this up, move your subscription box up, and then you can move this one up to the right-hand side as well. What I do like is that they are related to this video. They are related to Instagram, which is perfect, but I would just move them up, move them up a little bit. And what I found is that the subscription one where it's just your face, it's hard to differentiate it from other things on the screen. In fact, in this case, it's very hard to differentiate it because you have other circle images here that are here already from your tutorial. So a lot of people, what they do is they include like a little arrow or uh, please subscribe, or they come up on video and they click here to subscribe. And that way it shows that that little box that just showed up, which is your face, which doesn't show it's for subscription purposes, actually can show people it is for subscription purposes. So yes, we can adjust these, but let me see if you close out with any language to help me further go deeper into your stuff too. And it's also on my posts. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if it saved you a lot of time like it did me, definitely give this a like and comment below and let me know. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey there. It's okay, um, so I like how you say, I'll see you in the next video. You can be even more clear with, hey, on the screen right now, you might even see other videos that might be helpful for you to take your Instagram game to the next level, right? Again, going into a little pitch about why people should stick around. I like how you ask for a like, and you know, if you enjoyed this video, if you got value out of it, click like and comment below. Perhaps we can get a little bit more specific with our comments too. This is another thing that I've been recently trying to do more, rather than just, hey, comment below with what you like, um, actually ask for a specific thing to comment on. So for example, you might be going like, hey, uh, and comment below and let me know uh, if you've done this already and how it's working out for you, right? Or let me know below if, you know, uh, I, I actually, you could do other things. That this, this may or may not be within your style, but other things to do below that can get people encouraged is to go, hey, comment below with how many followers, your followers you currently have on your Instagram account and even uh, include your Instagram username there too so we can all connect to each other, right? Now people have a reason to share their comments, right? Versus just, hey, comment below. Now you're giving them a reason to do it, right? So that's just some additional tips for you to help you with your YouTube channel. I think that's really great. I also believe you have a website, Lindsay Hazel, is it not? LindsayHazel.com. And I wanna see how you might connect your YouTube channel to your site and vice versa. So let's go to your YouTube channel here, uh, or excuse me, site. And there you are, which is good that we're confirming we're in the right spot. This is really cool. I like the sort of uh, images back there. I, I, you know, honestly, this on your website, this background doesn't do as much for me as this. You know, very nice face. People can come to you, feel like they can belong, just like on your YouTube channel. I wouldn't mind you putting it up here and having people be excited about sort of seeing a sample, if you will, of what it is that you do and click to learn more. Now, it's interesting that, and I always look for, and by the way, this is this is sort of the, the idea here. You know, this is what I'm looking for. Does your website and or YouTube channel tell me exactly what this is for and what it can do for me? You do this directly and, 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 and absolutely on your YouTube here. For those of you who came in late, this is Lindsay's YouTube channel, right? How to tutorials, product reviews, video editing tips, weekly videos, inspiring you to make videos you love. Very clear with a benefit and all that stuff. Uh, I love that. On the website, 
in particular, helping new video creators make better videos for YouTube and Instagram one video at a time. I, in fact, like this tagline better here on the YouTube channel because it speaks directly to me. You're helping me versus this seems more like a business card, like, hey, here's the kinds of people I help, and you don't speak directly to me yet, right? And you're asking me to join before I, I know what you can do for me in particular. If I were to come to your website first, it's a little bit more disconnected, and you have to work a little bit harder to earn that trust. On your YouTube channel, it's very simple. The video pops up automatically. It's there on your artwork, and within your videos itself, it's much more cleaner, uh, much cleaner. Now, you're asking me to join before I learn more about what it is that I'm joining you for, right? So if I click here to join, I'm curious to see where this goes to. 4444, four, 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 four. whoa, okay, so that's that's not good. Um, so you're asking me to join, and then I come here to the 404. Now there's a disconnect, now I'm out, right? We cannot have people go to dead ends, especially on your number one call to action, right? And this is your number one call to action. It's a big pink button, that says click here to join. There's nothing else on the page that wants me to, that you want me to do, that you would rather have me do than go here. So maybe this either needs to change out, and also, what I was what I was hoping to get at was, well, you're asking me to marry you before we've gone on dates, right? So how are you going to show me here on your website that um, I think? How are you going to show me here on your website what it is that you can do for me already, and how we can continue to move forward? Um, I like how you have some social proof here, which is cool. You have a little bit of a bio, which is great. Uh, get started today, making videos, video editing, video tools. Take me to the shop. You have a shop. Let's click on that. Curious to see where this goes and what, what you have there. Free YouTube starter checklist. Okay, so you have like courses, some little cards and things like that. Okay, so this is like on a, I don't know, what is this, like an Etsy or a Shopify type situation? Okay, that's interesting. It's not bad to have that, but it just uh, is probably not what people are here for. What people are here for is to learn how to start a YouTube channel and to grow, to grow their videos, right? And so you're asking me to join something. It doesn't go anywhere right now. It's a 404. That's not good. And you have some amazing videos on your YouTube channel. How can you display some of perhaps some of your best ones here on the homepage so that people can know exactly the kinds of things that you have to offer um, and what you can do for me, right? I have to go through some hoops to find this information here on your website versus your YouTube channel where I don't. Um, also, just let me see something really quick. Okay, cool. I, I also like your logo here. Lindsay Hazel, and then your logo here on your website is a little bit more generic, right? One video at a time, it's very small, I can't see it. Um, subscribe now. Okay, where does this go? To your YouTube channel, of course. Now, I like what you're doing here. This is a the trick for everybody. Um, if you look up here in the URL, it says, question mark, sub underscore confirmation equals one. Hey there, it's Lindsay from Lindsay Hazel. Oh. So here is how you schedule right. a meeting. Log into your shop. Okay, so this right here, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can blow this up for you so that you, got, you all can see it. Um, text edit. Document. This right here is the secret for getting people to to that subscription pop-up on your YouTube channel. If you add this to the end of your YouTube channel uh, URL, as you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner, same thing. She has her YouTube channel uh, URL, and then question mark, sub, and all that stuff. This is what brings that pop-up. Let me show you one more time. This right here, are you sure you wanna to subscribe to Lindsay? And this is great. I've actually implemented this myself and it works out really well, especially if you on your website, for example, are already telling people to go somewhere, right? Hey, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I would say every week I share actionable tips and strategies for creating video content on my YouTube channel. Click here to subscribe and get videos that help you succeed or, 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 or do a little bit more about, okay, well, cool that you share these videos, but again, what, what's it gonna do for me? So a little bit more personal in the call to action. And then for everybody watching, when you have that link, again, with this, added on to the to, to the um, end of your YouTube channel URL, it's gonna automatically ask, are you sure you wanna subscribe? That way a person doesn't go to your channel and either get distracted or forget or not subscribe. 
it's you either subscribe or you're out and you've already asked them and enticed them, they can just do that directly, right? So that's how you do it. It's this question mark and then sub underscore confirmation equals one. And that's how you get to that. So thank you, Lindsay, for doing that so we could share that with the rest, rest of the group here. And then of course, this YouTube starter checklist, this is probably the most important thing to, to build email, uh, to build your email list. And in fact, I would swap out the click here to join with, again, remember this went to some 404 page versus this call to action here to subscribe uh, to your YouTube channel. Actually, that's not what I meant. I meant here, the, the YouTube charter, the YouTube starter checklist. This would be the first call to action because then you can get people to uh, quote unquote go on dates with you and then be able to then learn more about how you can help them and then hopefully get to the point where they can then get into your master class and see these other things within your shop. You need to take some time to build a relationship first before you ask them to join. But I'm also considering how you connect people from your website to your YouTube channel and you do that down here, which is really great. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, when I click on start a YouTube channel, where does that take me? Subscribe to your channel. This probably goes to the same thing with the pop-up on YouTube. Okay, sub confirmation, that's good, That that's correct. You're doing a good job there. Uh, let's see, starting YouTube, this is just like a great resource page. Cool, I like this, the start here stuff, which is really good. Because this is such an important page, Lindsay, I would pop up a video that's here, that's unlisted, that's just for the people who landed here. And I would say, hey, my name is Lindsay. This is a video that's not public, but it's here just for you because I know you're looking to start a YouTube channel. Down below, you're gonna see a lot of information and I want you to take it step by step. Starting a YouTube channel is very difficult, but I've done it and I've helped so many other people too and I wanna help you too. So I would start with prepping yourself and down below, you're gonna see a section called prep work that can help you and if you need to get started first before you start creating your channel. I talk about things like your brand name and what kinds of equipment that you might need. Click on that first and make sure you watch the videos all the way through and then move on to the next one after that. By the end of this, you're gonna have this beautiful YouTube channel and you and I both together can grow on YouTube and support each other along the way. So that's how I would go about doing that. The start here page is absolutely key because when people come to your website, websites and blogs are typically just like a giant compendium of all this stuff that doesn't make necessarily make sense to come and consume an order uh, that you wrote it in. But here on your start here uh, page uh, for your YouTube channel, I really love this. I would really, really beautify this with a video of yourself and call the actions to go step by step. And this just links to other content that you already have. So that can kind of put this together. And, uh, and I really love that. So yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. So uh, congratulations, uh, Lindsay, you are doing a wonderful job. I would just say keep going. And I would encourage you to create more videos. You on your video channel, I see have, um, you know, you publish videos, you know, twice a month, it looks like, two or three times a month. And I don't know if you are sharing this information or doing this live elsewhere. It looks like you might be just doing these tutorials elsewhere and just taking these out. I would do more. I mean, look at this one, how to change your picture. This one has 3000 views. The more videos you do like this, the more opportunities that there are people who are gonna find you for search. And um, and yeah, that's that's awesome. I also wanted to give you some insight uh, for those of you and encourage you on YouTube. Uh, and, and we're gonna break away from Lindsay stuff now. I'm gonna take you to my YouTube. I came out with a video earlier in the week. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Who's that? Cheer programmer. Thank you so much for the super. I'm gonna go to videos and show you some analytics based on my latest video, which was about working from home with kids. And I wanna take you to the analytics. In fact, four or five hours after this video came out, it had very poor analytics. It actually shared that it was the least viewed video of the last 10 videos in terms of how many views that I got within a certain amount of time. And you know, you can't get phased by that. And I, I knew that this was a good video and gotta keep going. And even if the video never never picked up, you still know that it's gonna help people and you can still share it as a resource with people later. So it's not all a waste. I, th I think that YouTube, a lot of us get really honed in on, well, how well is this video performing to, uh, versus others? And that's important and it's good to know what works and what doesn't so you can do more of what does and less of what doesn't. But sometimes on YouTube, things take time. And I want you to check this out. The first few hours of this video, in fact, the first 21st hours, uh, 21 hours, it was way below average. Typical within this period, 2.4 or 2.4K, we only had about 1,000. And I have, remember, 255,000 YouTube subscribers here, being one of them, by the way. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already, by the way. 
make sure you hit subscribe. But YouTube eventually picked it up and look at this, it just started to, sh to shoot. And then now it's actually ranking my typical video views, right? So I, it's really important to understand that sometimes here on YouTube, videos take time and need time to pick up. And so this video took some time, about a day before YouTube went, hey, we actually like this and we're gonna share it with more people, which is really great. So even if it, this didn't perform, I knew that this is still a helpful video and I would still recommend just continuing to post videos despite whatever the results may be. And again, always pay attention to what works and what doesn't over time. But we are definitely finding that this video is, is getting a lot of, um, is definitely getting a lot of love, which is, which is really fantastic. Um, it also is very important to understand, okay, well, where is this love coming from? So I'm gonna go to advanced mode here and I'm gonna look at traffic source. And I'm gonna see where I can find where this traffic is coming from. And I see that the external is actually doing quite well for bringing new people in. So now I can click on external and I can do Google, I can see that it's a Google search, right? So that's really interesting because that is not always gonna be the case. So now I'm actually gonna look up work from home with kids. I don't know if my video pops up first or what, what the case may be. Unfortunately, YouTube is not able to tell me what keywords, I think. I can't go a little bit deeper into that, uh, but that would be cool to know. But it's nice to know that Google's supporting and that of course then helps YouTube and YouTube helps me and all that kind of stuff. So this, this stuff sometimes takes a while, but uh, yeah, it takes, it takes some time. 96% traffic from external, yes, again, which is, which is surprising actually this is the first time I'm finding that out. But anyway, we gotta, keep, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. So Lindsay, thank you so much for your example. I'm gonna go into uh, ConvertKit here to find another person who we can go into for their stuff. And again, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate y'all. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Sai. Sai, we're gonna go to your website and check you out. Uh, we don't have a YouTube channel here, but we're gonna go to your website. Let's just clean up the tab. All right, Sai's website is factoryforward.com. Building a bassoonist asks, actually, before we go there, as it's loading, Pat, can you go over the different traffic sources on YouTube and what they mean for how people find videos? Uh, sure, absolutely. So you'll find different different sources like external, and when you click within external, you'll you'll actually be able to see the websites and or other sources like Google Search, like you just saw, in terms of where people come from. Typically, you're going to see people come in from either browse or home. Home means that on their homepage, YouTube is recommending your videos to them. Uh, browse is when they're browsing around the YouTube space, and they might see a related video on the sidebar or one that pops up after they watch a video, and that is YouTube recommending your stuff as well. You will also find that content and, and uh, actually your stuff is able to be found through search. And this is where a lot of my videos are actually found because I create a lot of videos that are very specific to search terms and tutorials and products and reviews that people are looking at for demonstrations. And that is uh, really important too. So if I could go back into YouTube for you, I'm gonna find a particular video if I look up, for example, ConvertKit, which is an email service provider that I actually promote, uh, here's a video that I have. It's actually the first video outside of YouTube's own ConvertKit video. And I'm gonna go to analytics here for this particular video. And let's see where the sources are coming from this video. So let's go to uh, reach. Actually, I can see it here on the left-hand side, even just in the overview, YouTube search suggested videos, external browse features, and director unknown. So these are sort of the top ones. As you can see, YouTube search provides 50% of the traffic for this. Suggested videos are when people are watching a video, this is something that is suggested elsewhere. A great thing to do here, if you can, is to go to your, let's see if I can go to uh, analytics for reach, top traffic sources, I'm gonna see more. And then I wanna click through into suggested videos. This is very powerful. Let's see if I can actually get into this. Suggested videos more. Hmm. 
Okay, traffic source. I'm trying to get to the point where I can find out what these actual suggested videos are that are actually bringing people to my video here. And uh, let's see. Sometimes YouTube's analytics are too advanced and we have a hard time finding. So I'm tr I am I wanna click through to that because what I can do sometimes is I can find out, well, what videos are linking to this video? Hmm, more, let's see. No, traffic source. Yeah, it's not, it's not doing what I want it to do for some reason. Let's try the last year and see if I could, okay, there we go. So for some reason I had to go to the last year, but now I can actually click through and I can go to YouTube search, for example, and I can find the actual terms that people are typing in, which is really helpful. ConvertKit, ConvertKit tutorial, ConvertKit, how to use ConvertKit. I make sure that each of these become tags that I use on my YouTube videos. If I go back, Did I go back? If I go back one, I'm gonna click on suggested videos. And this is really key because then now I can actually look into these videos. So this is a video from Justin, right? So Justin uh, from Primal uh, Video is somebody who does a lot of tutorials as well. And now I know that my video shows up when his video plays. And so that's really cool because now I can reach out to him. I can do more of like the same types of videos that he does. Something I might do is go to his video here taking a little bit of time, I apologize. What's the best email marketing software for you? Well, after testing a lot of the best email services and even running our business on over five of the leading options, here's our top recommendations and what you need to know when deciding which is the best email marketing platform for you. By the way, Justin is a pro. He just crossed 600,000 subs. He's growing like wildfire right now he's a good friend of mine we've done collaborations together he's he's great i mean listen to that hook right if you come here looking for best email marketing software i mean listen what's to this. the best email marketing software for you well after testing a lot of he's asking what's good for you and then now he goes into proof the best email services and even running our business on over five of the leading options here's our top recommendations and what you need to know when deciding which is the best email marketing platform for you and then he goes into the splash intro I mean, within 10 seconds, you're hooked at this point, which is really great, which is why he's ranking it really well. But my video likely pops up as a recommended video here. Look, up next, um, and I show up on the, on the right-hand side, which is cool. Now, what I would do, in fact, is click on Justin's videos, and I'm gonna go to videos, and I'm gonna go to popular, sort by most popular. Now I can see if there's any of other uh, Justin's videos that I can create too, because YouTube now has connected us, right? In some form, my video has been recommended on his channel. So now YouTube might even do this more should I actually end up doing more of what Justin's doing as well. It doesn't necessarily mean I should or have to do that, but it's a, it's a, it's a great place to start in terms of, well, what other videos can I create and how can I essentially piggyback off of other people's success in a great way where I can add value to their community too. So I might, do videos about uh, you know creating a YouTube channel or editing videos or creating a custom intro. I mean, look at this. These are all, these all have millions of views, which is pretty crazy. But this that's a fun strategy to go. Okay, well, what other videos can I create? Well, wh where else am I getting found, and how can I do more videos like that so I can get found even more? YouTube does know who's connected to who in that in that in that fashion. So anyway, sorry, uh, Sai FactoryForward.com is your website. And I'm looking here and I'm, I'm seeing that this is for, you know, like uh, coding and hardware for Raspberry and, and things like that, which is really cool. Uh, robotics and wireless things. Um, it's almost like a store for specific, specifically this kind of stuff. Uh, however, I am a little bit underwhelmed in how you welcome me on the website and tell me more about what it is that you do, right? I see that the name is Factory Forward. That doesn't tell me what the, what the business is about. The name is fine. But here on the homepage, I'm seeing that there uh, is this slider which shows me some specific things, but it doesn't give me any reason to stay or or assume that this is different or better than any other other website where I can go and get the same kind of stuff. Do you have cheaper things or do you have the most economical or, or, or special deals? 
Do you have rare items that people can't find elsewhere? Is there uh, free shipping uh, for certain things? And that would entice me. Um, have you served a certain number of customers? Do you have access to certain things that other people don't? Whatever it is that's unique to your brand, especially if it's something like this where it's a store that people can buy stuff from, we have to understand, okay, well, what can we do to differentiate ourselves from others? And whatever that differentiation is, we need to absolutely, we need to absolutely post it up there and have it be very clear, right? So I have like, I see an eyelash and I've been trying to get it, get rid of it. I see it down here. Maybe it's part of my mustache, I don't know. Because up here I'm seeing search. You can't assume that people are even gonna know what is and available, right? Uh, and then under here, like great to see some testimonials or other people who have used your service to help justify why people should stick around and stay here. I'm not going to go too much further because there's not much uh, else that I can talk about other than if I go into a specific product, you know, these reviews here, the ones without reviews, I'm like, the, those don't entice me yet. They're the featured ones up here. Uh, you might want to see how you might be able to not show that nobody has purchased from here. That's that's essentially what it's saying when there's zero reviews. It's very difficult to, to get people to buy stuff where there's zero reviews. I would feature the things where there are reviews and there's some good deals going on. Like this one, for example. I see a review and I'm going to see how on this page you entice me to purchase this product. Again, I don't know this industry very much, but for customer reviews, that's great. This looks very much like and it's structured similar to an Amazon page which is uh, really great because that's what people are used to. Additional information, great. I mean, it, this this looks like it has all the things. Um, I worry a little bit about the fact that there are these sort of avatars with no faces because that just shows me that, okay, well, again, would people even have their pictures in here? I would assume that there is probably nobody here that has their image unless they have an account. And um, it almost just makes it seem less real. So I would take the images of of, of, of these sort of um, generic profile pictures out and just feature the ratings here. And you see, you got related products. So you've built your own store, which is which is really great. I think the, the last piece of advice I could give you is number one, how are you collecting email addresses here? That way you can offer more deals to people. Uh, you can actually uh, have a connection to your audience, see what other products they might want. And I think that, uh, you know, this perhaps is a a drop shipping site. I'm not sure this this might, you know, collect information from customers and then this person would, uh, you know, Sai would then go and then promote this uh, or, you know, reach out to these companies that actually are the ones that serve and drop ship these things to other people. And then you take a little bit of a reg, uh, a share and that's okay. I would, I would see how you might be able to go a little bit deeper into the more popular products and then see how you might be able to also perhaps offer some information to collect email addresses so that you can further connect with people and then finally, whatever customers you do have, I would definitely make sure to reach out to them to get to know them, see what else they might need help with on a personal level. That's what's going to help you stand out. If I were to go to About Us, I'm going to see like how much you connect. Fast forward is electronics distributor and e-commerce store with the goal to bring new technology and latest microcontroller development bo uh, boards and sensors. Like this is cool. 25,000 happy customers, 50,000 orders, 150 items sold. I don't know what's the difference between 50,000 orders and 150 items sold. Perhaps that just means there's 150 items in your catalog, which I would change that language because it makes it only seem like you've only sold 150 uh, items versus 50,000. Plus, it was counting. Did you notice that? It was, it was counting. And then it goes to like a very, very, very clear number. I, 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 I don't want to assume that maybe I just got lucky and we got to 50,000 or 25,000 customers and 50,000 orders right on the dot today. Um, so I would either have the very specific number or not have the counter and just share as social proof like this is how many customers you've had. That could be something that could be shown on the homepage, in fact. And I think that that's a differentiator, the fact that people are using this and that there's happy customers. I, I like that. I think that should be shown on the homepage here. Um, and then another thing when it comes to these these places, if you could show a picture of you or a human being or the team on the other end or something that makes it seem more real, again, people default to doubt online. So we have to do whatever we can to counter that, to, to um, refute that. So images of you or an image of the factory or something that makes it seem more human, something that makes it show more proof that this thing actually works. So I think that's really key. Uh, but well done. Thank you. Uh, and let's just keep it going. I'm going to go to another 
person here who may have uh, offered their website for review, website and or YouTube channel. All right, we're gonna go to Ava. Ava, if you're in the room watching the chat right now, let me know. But here is your uh, website, SEJ Therapy. Is that Sej, Seth, Sej, Seth, uh, or no, Seth Therapy, SEJ Therapy. Um, it's okay that I didn't get that. That's, it, y your URL is actually not as important as what the URL represents and how you uh, get people to understand what this is about immediately when people come in. So very cool image. I see it says, preserve your light. That, and I'm just going step by step here, preserve your light. Um, that can mean a number of different things. And I don't necessarily know that it's for me yet. So I'm gonna keep going here. I think that's okay to have these sort of uh, wider messages, but I, I hope that we get a little bit more honed in here. Virtual therapy, coaching and doula services, schedule an appointment. So again, you're asking me to essentially schedule an appointment with you before I get to know more about what you can do for me, who you are, and the kinds of things you can do to help me. Uh, we can assume by just having 10 words here that a person's gonna be ready and excited to schedule an appointment. I will click on this, however, to see what this is like and what journey you take me through because maybe there is more here that I can learn about you before I actually make a decision and maybe we just have to change the text from schedule an appointment to learn more about how I can help you, for example. So I'm gonna click on schedule an appointment. And if it goes to like a calendar already, then I'm gonna be a little bit, so see, so you, you're asking me to pay you without knowing too much about you yet. Uh, but let's see, receive the treatment you need from the comfort of your home, being able to provide support in your comfort zone helps. Online therapy can help with depression, stress, anger. Okay, so you talk a little bit more about, the, about what this can do and the benefits of it, which I think is great. But then you ask me to pay and I don't know who you are yet. I don't know how this is gonna work. Um, and this, I would imagine that a lot of people, again, default to doubt. Uh, is this a picture of you also, by the way? Um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, this Im this is one of those instances where an image, although it looks great, if that image were to be taken out, it wouldn't actually take away from what is what is it that a person needs to get here, right? If it was an image of you or some of the equipment or the practices and how they might happen, then that actually serves a purpose, right? Versus just a nice image of an, of, a, of a person. Um, so images are really important because they can help solidify. They can help show proof. They can help break up a page, but if the image itself, if you could take it out and it doesn't take away from from any messaging, if it isn't required, then I would not use that image at all or replace it with another image. Um, but again, remember, like this is the biggest thing on the page. It takes up more than half the page and it just says online therapy. And the biggest thing that I would say on this page is to make sure that whatever it is that you're offering, whether it's coaching, especially if it's coaching, but something like online therapy or whatever the case may be, we need to be very, very clear about what that experience is going to be like. So let's say you're a coach, you share the kinds of things that you coach about and what life is like on the other end of that. But people want to know, okay, what does coaching actually mean? Am I getting access to you for calls? Or am I just, you know, text messages? Or is it a, a zoom call every week? Or, you know, are you going to, you know, create a plan of action for me that I get at the end of every week? Or you know, what is this actually going to be like? We talked earlier in the week, uh, earlier in the week about why people don't buy your stuff. And the number one reason that I shared was, well, people don't know exactly what they're getting and what that's gonna be like. So for digital products, especially, and when there's experiences involved, we need to be more clear and upfront about what that experience is going to be like, for example. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's keep going here. I'm gonna go to home and look more on the homepage to see what else you share. Life's challenges may leave you feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, and defeated. Okay. Sacred earthbound journey. Ah, okay. So that's the, I didn't see that up here. Uh, there was no logo. There was no, uh, the SEJ, sacred earthbound journey. That could perhaps be, instead of preserve your light, it could be welcome to sacred earthbound journey. Your place online for virtual ther therapy, coaching, and doula services so that you'll have less stress and be happier in your life scroll down or see the kinds of uh, information we have available to you or subscribe to get access to your free PDF file to help you uncover the three most common reasons why experience anxiety in their life or, or what have you, right? So scrolling down, sacred earthbound journey, safe place to journey through this thing called life. 
I love that. I think that 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 connects me more than preserve your light again, which is a great thing to say. It makes sense. It's kind of a nice, fun little tagline, but fun and clever. Sometimes, it, especially if this is like the only thing you're sharing, it's it's not enough. Uh, dedicated to providing affordable and accessible services that cater to your unique needs and goals. Scroll down, virtual therapy. So this is the same image. Is this you? Hello, uh, my name is, and again, just this pose doesn't necessarily say, I invite you to learn from me. I invite you to uh, get help from me. This photo screams more like, see this, this hand here, like, hey, look at me, I'm beautiful. And it seems very, I don't know. It just doesn't fit with what it is that you're doing here, right? Perhaps there's, because it's coaching, I would imagine that you're okay, like, you know, showing your face upon coaching services. And yeah, again, the, 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 these images, I don't know if they're just placeholder images right now, but they don't, they don't do justice for what it is that you're offering. They don't showcase. This, this is more like a model who is likely just posing and it's a stock photo. And that, like, under virtual ther therapy, how does this image showcase virtual therapy, right? Um, channel started three weeks ago. Would love some feedback, says Ronald. Okay, so, so okay, I thought you were uh, the owner of this. Let's go to About to see if there's more information about you. Meet your therapist. Okay, so I'm not scrolling down yet. All I see is meet your therapist in a blurry image of a different person behind the scenes. And the fact that it's blurry to me, it makes it sort of, I was just actually waiting it for it for it to clear up. But also, what does this say? To have a picture of a person, but it's blurry, but it says meet your therapist, right? That's I'm just telling you what's coming across, right? I, I'm pretty sure that's not what you meant to do. But again, this is not doing, the, the images are not, it's a, it's a great color, by the way. But if I scroll down, Ava. There you are. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Okay, so I would say that it's this is the first time I'm getting to know you, right? And I think that if if there was a possibility of you putting a picture on there, I think that's really important because people want to learn from other human beings and they're not going to pull out their credit card. They're not going to pay if they don't know who they're learning from. When it comes to coaching, the most powerful thing is the connection you make with people before you actually ask for payment in the coaching process. What's that going to be like? Like I said earlier. So meet your therapist. Just kidding. It's blurry. I'm not going to show my face. Ava Griffith, I love how you're sharing a little bit more of your qualifications here for something like coaching, especially within this room. That's really key. So I love how you share that. That is a great way to have people feel more of a sense that this is going to work for them. I have experience with children, adolescents, and adults with mental health conditions and other social uh, stressors, specialized in helping individuals dealing with depression, anxiety. That's great. That's fantastic. You're certified, which is fantastic too. Some images about uh, you helping others, some testimonials here would be great too, just to kind of share more proof. I'm very apprehensive. I'm, I'm very doubt. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm, if I were somebody on this website, Ava, and I was looking for actually therapists to help me through these situations and, um, and, and, and coaching, uh, to help me through these stresses in life. Um, see again, uh, other, other images that don't really relate. Uh, I, at the current state of the website, would not be comfortable enough to reach out to you because I don't know exactly who I'm reaching out to and I don't know what that experience is gonna be like. The other great place to share more information is what's gonna happen next, right? So, you know, okay, so here we go, how it works. I like that, that's here, which is great. In our coaching sessions, I allow you to curate your goals while helping you find the barriers. This can include identifying emotional limitations on our, okay, my service is designed. Okay, but it still doesn't tell me like specifically what this is gonna be like. How how much time am I gonna have with you? What a coaching session like? Do you have a sample or maybe a podcast episode or a video where you actually coach a person through to see the sense of style, right? Uh, when I created my show, Ask Pat, which turned into a coaching session live on the podcast, um, people started reaching out to me without me asking anybody if they were interested in coaching. I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching currently. People reached out to me to see if I did coaching because they saw me coaching others. So if, and, and again, may not be relevant or possible in your space because there probably are some personal things that people don't want shared publicly, which I totally get, but perhaps there's even a small snippet of how you coach somebody anonymously and how your style is and what it's like. People wanna hear your voice. Eventually, they're gonna hear your voice. They wanna know what that's gonna be like. Whether it's a physical or digital product, people wanna know what they're gonna buy before they buy it. Um, cool. So much seems clinical. Yes. 
I was also waiting for the photo to become clear. I want to see who I would be working with. Add a picture of yourself would be helpful. Awesome. Yes, so I think we're all in the same boat here. Uh, hey, Archer says, Ava, your site is very well designed. These tips are going to boost you to the next level. Indeed, yeah. The, I, 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 I am not saying anything about the layout and the design. I love it. In fact, it's very minimal, and it, it, it gives me and points me to, the, to exactly the places I need to see. Now it's just a matter of, okay, well, what's on those places and, and the words that you use, right? And again, remember, this is sort of what we're, uh, what we're fighting for here. Number one, does it tell me who this is for and what's in it for me? This website does a pretty good job of doing that, but I had to go and find it. It doesn't tell me right up front, and this should happen on the homepage right up front. Are you helping me know what to do first? Well, you want me to schedule an appointment, but again, we haven't yet built that relationship first. And I don't know if you're helping me understand about what it's like to work with you in particular. How am I connecting to you versus others? Again, more about you showing up or you sharing how others have been helped by you too. That way I can see that are actually somebody who stands out amongst everybody else who's helping others with anxiety and stress too. Uh, Non-essentials and distractions, there weren't a ton of that. And branding and design, the, 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 the logo and whatnot, when I eventually found it, which was down here, you know, was really great. And I think that this could be brought up a little bit more. It provides a sense of, you know, uh, connection. I like, the, I like the image. And um, again, it does a better job of uh, that than just preserving your light here. Cool. Uh, great. Lewis B. Agreed. Pat did my website a few weeks ago. I took so many notes and went back and made the changes. It is helpful, not hurtful. Yeah, I mean, uh, is Ava here? And I hope, Ava, that if you are here, you are not taking this personally. Um, I, again, don't know when you started this, and I am here to help and serve you. And uh, I hope this doesn't come across as hurtful or like I know things better than you. No, this I'm, I'm just steps ahead of you, and I'm, I'm wanting to help bring you up to the level that I know that is possible. And what it is that you're doing is so, so important. I mean, you're helping people, especially in times like right now. Maybe there's even some special uh, giveaways or PDFs or even uh, blog posts or information about how people can deal with the specific stresses and anxieties that they're having right now. And then you share those publicly for free on your website and on your socials, which then bring people back to you because they see that you're actually helpful. They get a sense of your style. Now with your website, that can do the job of helping people feel comfortable with scheduling an appointment with you. And remember, like there are people out there who need you right now. And it's these websites and our mechanisms online here that help uh, convince a person that we are actually indeed wanting to help and that we have the things that can help them. And I'm just trying to uncover some of those doubts that people might have for you so that it's a lot easier for you to convert people into a client and then hopefully have a, a much longer relationship with them. Cool. So thank you uh, again for that. And um, hurtful was probably too, too strong of a word. Yeah, no, but I mean, I think this is important, right? Feedback can sometimes be very difficult to hear because we work so hard on these things and building a website is not the easiest thing in the world. Starting a YouTube channel from scratch is very difficult and it's very, uh, hard to put yourself up on camera to sort of be vulnerable like that. But I think that when we have safe spaces like this where uh, there's a leader and other community members who can help come together for the greater purposes and the better good of, of, of everybody, um, and it may take sort of getting into individual case studies into showcasing what could be done better, constructive criticism, this is where we can all learn together and better perform. And of course, we're all doing this for the right reasons, right? I seem to attract people who do this because not just they want to grow their business for themselves, but they want to grow their business to serve others too. And I think that's what's really great about this community. So that's great. I checked Ava out online and she has 19 years of experience, lots of testimonials on other websites. Maybe she can get more of those on her website. Yeah, for sure. And probably, and I'm assuming that perhaps a lot of her work and her clients come from elsewhere, but websites especially, are important today for people who are coaches because they these become you know the place that people go to to find out more information and to learn more plus people are doing google searches about certain people and they this is what they find and if what they find is sort of lackluster or doesn't best represent them then they might lose a potential client and so this is why in addition to these other directories where we might be available and where we might show up and we're guided by the different directories that we might be putting information on 
having a website to support that because people do want to do more infra, uh, research and they are going to go to your website to learn more about you before they hire you. We need to make sure that this stuff is also up to par too. Woo. You're awesome, Boris. Thank you so much for being here. She can only get better and better. Yeah. I'm hoping I can get some feedback today. Ronald, uh, cool. Let's finish up with you. I started a little bit later, but uh, I'm going to go a little bit uh, further here. Ronald, where are you at? Did you pop in your website here uh, at patflynn.com slash review? I'm going to see if actually your stuff is shown up here. Appreciate you that you're here. And maybe we can just do a little bit of a find you. Yeah, so Ronald, I don't, I don't see you on on the list here. Uh, if you go to patflynn.com slash review, you can actually insert your information. And uh, this is, um, you know, let me know in the chat. I assume by your site that she was just starting, but so not the case. Yeah, and this is, again, a reason why we need to really make sure that our websites and our quote-unquote real estate online does a great job of, of supporting us. Cool. So Ronald, if you have that info, let me know. Um, we can't just type it into Google here or into YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow URLs to show up. So if you're able to uh, pop in your information there, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that, patflynn.com slash review. I'd be more than happy to do that for you really quickly here. Cheryl says, Pat, very good reviews today. Thank you so much. Uh, this is something I love to do. Plus, it's just really, you know, it helps everybody. It also helps me. And, you know, I coach a lot of people privately, a lot of my students, and this helps fine tune my uh, abilities as well. And this is sort of a win for everybody, which I which I really love. Anything Cameron says, hey, Pat Flynn, you think you might be able to give me a video review on Monday when it comes out? Uh, not on Monday in particular, but perhaps next weekend we can do an assessment of that video. I know that you've been working really hard on that. Contempo coding is on the list as well. Yes, I see that here, too, which is really great. Let's see. All right, well, in the meantime, while we're here, all right, let's go to, uh, let's see if I can find this really quick. One sec. All right, well, I don't see Ronald's stuff. We might have to wait till next weekend to do that, but I've been refreshing and I do not see his information coming in unless, Ronald, you are going through a, a different name. Um, but let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I would love to review this one here. Uh, let's see, Contempo Coding. So uh, thank you so much for letting me know that you were there. Uh, I picked people at random and uh, you just happened to be who I saw um, reach out in the chat, which is really great. So first impressions, Contempo Coding, Medical coding tips, tricks, tutorials. I would lift up Contempo coding because it's very close to the bar below and the bar below actually is what's drawing my attention. I would actually flip the colors or not flip the colors, but I think that that, that the as seen on stuff could be reduced because those are many different colors, many different fonts. It's, it's quite noisy up there. Um, and I would have Contempo coding be a little bit more higher and bigger and have these even be grayed out, for example. And it just continue the blue down and have these sort of light, excuse me, and that way, you know, I really see Contempo coding, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, medical coding tips, ticks, tricks, and tutorials. That's what I want to see versus where my eye went is HealthCon, NEC, Alpha Coding. That's what I saw first, and that doesn't, that, that, that's, that's, that's the opposite of what we want to happen, right? I'd also say that, you know, this image here, hashtag medical coder, this is really cool. I love that you have that on your shirt. Um, you look like very serious in this photo. That's That may or may not be a bad thing. That could be the style that you want to go through, but it's almost like the approach of, you know, hey, I'm like your boot camp instructor versus, which again, is not a bad thing. If that's the style you want to go for, great, versus um, more of a picture that's more smiley and like welcoming. And I'm not saying that the other one's not, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of how this image is coming across. I hope, hope you don't take offense to that. 2,000 subs, really great. Uh, see, this is, a, this is a great welcoming smile, which is a little bit different. So I, I now I'm assuming that you're not a uh, boot camp type person. And there are very brands that do have that sort of style. So um, 
trying to add, but won't take me. We'll try again. Okay. Uh, medical coding channel introduction. So I love how you have a channel uh, introduction. Let's go and play this and see what it's like. I like that. Do you want to have a rewarding and successful career in medical coding? I'm Victoria, and I've taught coding to thousands of students through various courses, classes, webinars, and national conferences you over the nice. past you decade. You on stage? Awesome. In this channel, I tips, tricks, and tutorials to make medical coders strong and prosperous. I benefit. believe that excited and informed medical coders will help advance healthcare on a global scale. And the more I can keep you engaged, the better the entire healthcare industry is going to be. So if you are interested in engaging medical coding content, you are going to want to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get alerts when I post episodes. I'm here every week with brand new content. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single. Uh, one of the best welcome videos I've seen. You showed authority, you showed uh, benefits, you shared a little bit more about why this is important to you and what your ultimate goals are. I, 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 don't, I don't have any comments about that. And I see this was done five days ago. It's put in the right spot. I really love that, very good. I also love the thumbnails here. They stand out very much. You have your face on them, so that's easy to connect with. And I, I love that too. Uh, they stand out really well. They're nice big fonts. They're the same fonts, the yellow, uh, sort of how to code. That's, that's really great. I'm loving everything I'm seeing here so far. So let's go into one of these videos. I'm just gonna click play and see uh, how you do in terms of getting me interested in watching the rest of the video. Hey, coding crew, medical coding co convert kit user, by the way, I love that. Just a little uh, Easter egg with the shirt there. I love that. Um, your camera is really great. Your lighting is fantastic. I don't know if you're facing a window, if you have a light, but it's really good. Um, just, you could center yourself just a little bit. You're a little off to the left-hand side, um, or you can go a little bit more to the side, which then would allow for text to pop up next. Just, just a little comment there. I'm getting a little bit nitpicky here. Um, and then the final thing, just in terms of, uh, 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 of of the way the screen is set up, is sometimes we just got to pay attention to what's in the background. This this black uh, podcast arm I'm seeing could be moved in a way where you start to see a little bit more of the microphone, which does present a little bit more level of authority. This is sort of a hack, not necessarily a hack, but because obviously you don't have to have headphones on. I like that you have the headphones on. That's kind of cool. And it's sort of like, hey, we're doing this work, we're in this together. Having a microphone in the background is also really great. It also may uh, have people be curious about more of the videos or even if you have a podcast to go along with it versus just like this black thing. In the I would just move the, this a little bit more in a position where you can actually see the microphone, maybe to have it be covering up where this water bottle is, which is not that important. So again, just a minor tweak, but I wanted to share that with you. Hey, coding crew, medical coding content is starting to flourish. And here are some podcasts for medical coding that you are definitely going to want to check out. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay. Medical coding podcasts, content to follow successful. Sorry, that's a weird place to pause uh, and marketable medical coder. Um, okay. That, that's not bad. Okay. Uh, I would say we could go a little bit even deeper with Okay, here are some podcasts, but here's what what's going to come out of it, right? So you share that marketing uh, for pot for or you, this coding uh, industry is hot. Here's some podcasts to follow, and maybe if you had a couple of teasers or open loops that could keep me watching, that might be interesting. Uh, you could say like, and there's one in particular that has helped me earn more money, and I want to share that one with you too. So stick around, right? Just even quick little things like that versus just here's what you're going to get. Don't forget the so that or the why behind it too. All right, this is a little long for me, but I do like how you're sharing some behind the scenes, you in different environments, especially speaking on stage. I'm okay with that. It's a little long though. It's long, it's longer quiz. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria, and if you're new to my channel, I am here every week providing tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you succeed in a medical coding career. For a while, I was getting requests to- I like the jump cuts. For those of you who film YouTube videos, that's a completely legit way to do videos where you might just press record on your camera. Keep it going.
even if you make mistakes and you just chop out the middle part, it just goes right into the next the very popular style that was uh, started by Philip DeFranco actually back when YouTube started. And it's a very engaging way to do videos and it's easier to film. So I love, I love that style. Start a podcast and it's a lot of work to start a podcast and I didn't want to do it while I was still trying to figure out YouTube. You know, it's important that when you're learning these platforms, you don't Cool, that's really great. I'm gonna skip to the end here to see how you get me to watch more and click more. So I love this, I'm not gonna watch the rest of the video, but and I see your comment about the fact that there's headphones on because you're doing the podcast thing. The mic would have been cool too, but again, it's, it's, it's great. Every Friday. Do you have a favorite medical coding podcast? If so, drop it in the comments below. I like that, very specific comment that you're asking for. And as always, if you like this, you want to see more content, make sure you're supporting my channel by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you never miss another episode. I will see you in the next episode and you'll hear me on Fridays on my podcast. But until then, just keep on coding on. Great. So here is a different here's an end screen now. She's allowed for some time. I would have this go for even longer. I only see it's up there for just a few seconds, right? Like if I just keep going, it's done. I think that that could be more, I could be, that, oh, that could be up there the for longer. Below. I would have that up there for even 10 seconds or more. And I would include an arrow just really quick to your face here that says, click here to subscribe, right? And boom, I can subscribe. Cause that's again, not something that that's known, but really good vibe. I love it. Uh, I love how you have these second videos here. Keep on coding on. You have like a you, ha you have language and culture within your channel already. This is this is fantastic and not bad. Just a couple days ago, posted hundreds of views already. That is uh, that is that is great. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I have to share. But like once you do this and have the template, you can just keep using it over and over and uh, over again, like you were doing. And again, the biggest, I think, comment for design is just your, your channel artwork there, but uh, well done. Well done, I love it. Just looking for, let's see what your most popular video is, in fact. And I'm, I know I'm staying around longer, but I, I just wanna help. I just wanna help, I wanna help. Medical school coding, where to start your journey? That's great, two months ago, look at that, 10,000 views. I would hopefully see how you might be able to take that video and then have like a part two and then a part three, right? Hopefully this is part of a playlist, which I see uh, it might exactly be a part of a playlist, which is good. Are you interested in starting a career in medical coding but don't know where to start or what to do? Well, you're in luck because in today's episode, I'm gonna be covering getting started in medical coding. Okay, really, really quick little nitpicky comment. Again, I'm trying to help you, don't take offense to this, but I noticed that you're looking a little bit off camera. So let's say, for example, I'm looking over here, I'm trying to exaggerate this a little bit, but you might be reading something or, or seeing a teleprompter, I'm not exactly sure, but it did look like, you might be looking at a monitor. You might have a camera that has one of those flip out screens that, and you're looking at that. This is a very difficult thing to train yourself to do, but you wanna make sure you look at the lens of the camera and even just a slight looking up, like if I were to look at the monitor where I'm seeing myself right now, this is what it would look like. And it's very, very easy because it's a big bright thing and you wanna see what you look like, but you gotta, you gotta train yourself to look at the lens. Again, this, this video is performing extremely well, so obviously this didn't hurt you, but just to help you even more, make sure, Ronald, I see you, I'm, I'm gonna finish with you, so thank you for your patience. Um, but yeah, look, look, make sure you look directly at the lens of the camera. Uh, but what I want to know is what you're doing in the description here. So, okay, great. You're teaching in this description. You're, you're going well. So here's what I would do. You can do this immediately. Number one, you can add other video links here in the description. You know, this is your most popular video. People are finding it. Give them another way to go deeper into your stuff and just add that. That's what I would do. Um, add those links. The other thing that you can do is if this video is broken up into different parts, you can actually break it up by having timestamps. And I'm gonna go to how to start and cast. And I'm gonna show you my video really quick. And if you scroll down into here, you might see, do I have timestamps here? Yes, I do. So two things with timestamps. I'm gonna do this on the fly with you. 
because I didn't do it with this video yet. You see timestamps here. I can click on 211 and it goes directly to the part with the boom Instead arm. of using a stand, I would recommend using one of these boom. But I did a mistake. I should have zero, zero. So let me show this to you. Click edit video. I'm gonna scroll down. Zero, zero, zero. Introduction. I don't know why I did it all caps. Save. Now watch this. I'm gonna go back to the video. Look at the timeline of my video now. Hi, my name is Pat Flynn and I'm here to help you. Now it's broken up. There's the introduction, microphones, boom arm, shock mount, editing a podcast, how to import an audio file. This is the exact same that I did down here. How to edit an audio file. It's the zero, zero, zero that enables the chapters to be shown in the video, right? So make sure you do that. All right, let's finish up with, uh, with Ronald here. Hopefully his stuff came through. Cool, I see you, Ron, thank you. And let's go to Ronald's stuff. Ronald Parks, CPA. Big, clear, good images, love it. The thing that's missing, I like the subscribe here as well. Uh, the only thing that's missing here is, what about you, Ronald, is unique. What's your style? Do you make things easier? Do you, you know, what would you say is your own personal tagline? This is your own personal YouTube channel for your business, which is great. Personal brands have a lot easier job of connecting with people. Not that non-personal brands can't do it, but you're Ronald. I see your face, you're a human being, we can connect. But what about your practice makes you unique? I would include that in the tagline or perhaps have a tagline that represents sort of what you do for people, right? So that's number one. CPA, that's not enough. Love your thumbnails, by the way. I think that uh, depending on how many videos you have, let's see, how many videos do you have? So you have quite a bit of videos. You can add and start to add uh, a couple a couple uh, areas of your channel with playlists. Definitely utilize playlists and you're gonna start to uh, collect a number of different videos that belong in different categories. You can showcase those categories so that there's more information here for people to go down. For example, not just uploads, but um, you know, uh, retirement savings could be one. And then another one is specific to, you know, home buying. And another one is specific, and all the videos about home buying are there. All the, the videos about retirement are there, right? So that's, that's what I would do. But the thumbnails are really clear. I love it. These look great. You're doing extremely well for just being three weeks alive here on YouTube. One views, 1.3K one views. That, that's really great. The interesting thing to consider is, okay, well, why didn't this video perform as well as some of the other videos, right? I mean, you're getting thousands of views on these other ones and then only a, a few on these. So um, that's definitely something to pay attention. I haven't done enough al analysis to figure that out, but you're over 1,000 subscribers now, which is really great. Um, another thing that we can add is a welcome video, very similar to what Contempo Coding had, a welcome video, just, hey, my name is Ronald, I'm here to help you do X, Y, and Z, maybe some images and B-roll of you on stages or working with clients. That way it's just more human, it's more like um, exactly what uh, it is that people are gonna get on your channel and what it would perhaps be like to hire you. I think that'd be really great. So let's go into one of these videos and let's check out the hook and the sort of reasons. Um, I do see that you have a part one and a part two situation here, which I think is good. I have part five, part six on several of my different videos. And these are what then you can use to create different uh, sub categories and you can have them show up sort of in a vertical or horizontal fashion, uh, whatever is up to you. But I like, again, what I'm seeing here. I'm gonna click on this video here just to see it kind of how you hook me in. Hey guys, what's up? Ron Parks here and welcome back to my channel. It's early. Okay, so I don't typically recommend starting with a um, splash intro like that, but it was short enough that it's okay. So Ron, you don't have to change that because if it was any longer, I would say, well, people come here because they wanna learn a specific thing and then they're getting a seven, 10 second intro. You need to use those first 10 seconds to really, really hone people in on what they're here for. But again, remember people, people are watching this because they wanna learn how to manage your, your finances and save money. So I wanna see how long it takes until you get me to the point where you can hook me about this particular topic. 
Hey guys, what's up? Ron Parks here and welcome back to my channel. It's early morning here in LA, so let's just get into it. I thought now would be a good time to get a little personal on some facts about me, how I manage my finances, and why I started this channel in the first place. Over the years, I have benefited. Okay, so now you're going into the story. You haven't yet told me what's in this video for me. You told me it's early morning in LA, which I mean, that's okay to include a small little tidbits there. It's kind of cool that I get to know you're in LA. You're actually close to me. I like that. That's fine. And you did a little zoom in and zoom out. That's cool. But you haven't yet told me why I should stick around. I think what you could have done, Ron, is say in this video, I want to teach you how to manage your money or manage your finances and save money. This is the key to building wealth. And over the years, I've learned so much. And I want to tell you a little bit about my own story. And by the end of this, you're going to understand exactly how you could have more money in your bank account and actually live a much wealthier life or something, right? And then you get into your story. You haven't yet made it about me. So far, it's only about you, if that makes sense. It extraordinarily from people being open on YouTube about their lives, sources of income and investment philosophy and sharing real numbers. YouTubers like Graham Stephan, Nate O'Brien, and Pat Flynn. I'll Yo, hey, what's up? Uh, I like how you did the zoom in there. That was really engaging. Put a link below to their channels. They open their lives up to audiences that could benefit from their experiences. I also want to see if I can inspire some people to achieve financial independence, and multiple revenue streams from passive income, real estate, and other investments. Okay, cool. So you talk more about what the kinds of things you talk about, which I think is really key. Um, the, the thing I will say is you said I like a dozen times already, and you even said to help people X, Y, Z. Remember, a very individual, specific individual is watching this, and you need to say you more than I and never address the crowd, address the specific per person watching the video, if, if that makes sense. So, you know, I want you to learn how to manage your finances so that you can live a much more prosperous life. And I'm gonna be doing that here in this video by sharing my own examples with you, right? You, 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 less I, I, I. Okay, so I'm not gonna watch the rest of this, this video, but I wanna see how you close out. I do love the engagement and the different the, the different zoom in, zoom outs. That's really, that's, that's standout. I don't see a lot of people doing that, especially brand new channels. So well done on that. You have a, you have a soothing voice, it's, it's, it's very good. Um, I like the area of the home you chose. It's very interesting in the background, but not too distracting. I love it. I, I love the way the videos look. But let's see how you close out this video. To score and your financial health. If you spend an hour on these exercises, I know you will be taking the steps that will benefit you for the long term. I want to thank you again for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and subscribe. I would also love to hear comments about topics you'd like to hear and how I can make this channel great. And until next time. So I love that you're asking people for involvement. You know, what kinds of things do you wanna learn about? I think that's super smart. Um, but then you go into the reason, because I wanna make this channel great. And that again comes across very, and again, we're getting a little nuanced now because you're doing a lot of things right, but that comes across very, well, do that for me, versus because I wanna learn about how I can better serve you kind of stuff. Right, just a little bit of a uh, 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 of, of a quick language change, but that that stuff matters so so much. Let's go into one more video here. And I get, I think I would put your name up on there, just so like this is a generic logo. I would put your na name on there, and that way it's just connected to you, and you become the authority. Hi guys, what's up? Ron Parks here, and welcome back to my channel. I want to talk today about value investing. Value investing is an investment strategy that involves picking stocks that appear to be trading for less than their intrinsic or book value. Investors believe the market overreacts to good and bad news, resulting in stock price movements that do not correspond to a company's long-term fundamentals. And one of the most famous value investors is Warren Buffett. We have all watched famous investors. All right, so we're 30 seconds in, and again, you haven't told me why value investing should be something I should pay attention to. Um, and again, it could just be very quick, but some sort of reason that connects to me as the viewer is really key. You said, I want to teach you about in value investing. Okay. Why is this important to me? We need to really hone in on that. Um, but other than that, dude, you're, you're doing an excellent job. Um, you could potentially have the timestamps in the videos to add a little bit more 
uh, metadata and some chapters within there, especially for these longer videos where there might be different parts and sections that you that you might want to be talking about. Uh, you have some definitions here, which is really great. Um, I was going to see if you had a disclaimer because you're talking about finances, which is really key. Um, yeah, and I don't see these comments for some reason. Sort by newest first. Hey, Ronald, loved your video. Okay, I was going to see because this is really important when you're just starting a YouTube channel. Are you interacting? Um, are you following? I would use the heart button just to make people feel a little bit more special. It also notifies your subscribers and that's very easy to do and something that um, can get people more engaged early on, which is great. But yeah, this is really great and I would do what you can to connect with other channels as well. There's many other YouTube channels that talk about the same thing. Collaborate, talk with them and connect with them. So hey, y'all, uh, I appreciate you. Um, we stayed a little bit over, but I wanted to just provide more value to you. Plus I felt bad starting a little bit late, but we had some technology issues. And um, yeah, good job, everybody. I think this is great. Ron, thank you for, uh, and everybody here who has uh, put their uh, stuff on the chopping block. Hopefully this serves you. And I'm looking forward to helping out even more in the future. So hey, y'all, I'm gonna head out. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. patflinncom slash the income stream. Tomorrow we're gonna do, let's, let's do more YouTube channel reviews and website reviews. We'll do the same thing because I wanna do more of this. And it seems like a lot of you uh, got a lot of value out of this today. So uh, we'll do that. And um, as always, Team Flynn for the win. Thanks so much, everybody. Peace out. This is the income stream to help you with your dream. All while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired. So be required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Yo, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Um, for those of you who applied to SPI Pro, check it out, smartpassiveincome.com slash pro. Uh, we are sending out uh, letters and, you know, um, giving you more information this coming week. And I'm looking forward to starting with you next week. So, hey, y'all, thanks. Take care and ciao. Bruh.